Today's lecture is healthcare and the healthcare team. Healthcare trends. Technology. We're looking at electronic health records or electronic medical records. These are replacing paper records and they give us quicker access and fewer mistakes. An electronic health record is a history of your health care. An electronic medical record is the visit that you had today with your physician. So an electronic health record are many, many applications and visits to the doctor's office where an electronic medical record is recorded. It does help with fewer mistakes because a lot of handwriting causes a lot of errors. Preventive care and wellness is another healthcare trend. As you've noticed over the years, we talk about preventative care. Go to the doctors before you get sick so you don't get sick. Have your immunizations, have your flu shot, go get your um, lab work done to make sure that you can be taken care of and that you stay well. Whole foods is another healthcare trend. Whole foods contain little or no processing or additives. And what is wellness? A nutritional focus, including fitness, is wellness. We talk about the aging population, the baby boomers who are now in their uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And again, this is the effects of baby boomers entering Medicare. It's the largest population ever to be in the Medicare and Social Security venue. Physicians' offices, clinic, and urgent care centers, these are very different than they were 30 years ago when you just went to your doctor's office, which was part of a hospital, or private physicians who were allowed to practice at hospitals. Ambulatory or outpatient care facilities at hospitals. Ambulatory surgery centers started in the 90s. The surgery started in the 90s, and shortly thereafter, they started having separate buildings and separate businesses for day surgery. We have outpatient care facilities away from the hospital, such as patient rehabilitation centers. You broke your leg, you don't need to go to physical therapy. You don't necessarily go to the hospital anymore. You can go to one of many places in the area, and I'm sure you see them in your mind already, to be taken care of, as well as urgent care centers for outpatient care. Long-term care for the frail and elderly and disabled. The old-fashioned nursing home where the elderly went to wait to die is been upgraded back in the 90s to a four-tier level um, type of care where you can go in to recover from a hip replacement or knee replacement surgery for seven to 10 days and go home. It's short term. You can go in to recover from cardiac surgery, open heart surgery. They also have long-term care, close-head injuries. There's an Alzheimer's unit, which is now called a memory unit. And we have hospice for those that are nearing death and need to be taken care of. Um, it's also for the disabled. Again, closed has closed head injuries or people who have um, different types of spinal cord injuries and cannot take care of themselves anymore. Again, it is hospice care, and I'm not sure how many of you know, but hospice care is given to patients with less than six months to live. It is called palliative care because we are not trying to um, cure you or heal you. We are trying to help you ease out of life as best we can. The response to the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare. And some of the things in Obamacare are comprehensive care by a team of providers, not just one doctor. Patient-centered care with the patient as the team member. This now puts the patient as the manager of your care. You need to be part of your care. You need to be responsible for your care. You need to start asking questions. It's about coordinated care across healthcare services. Again, if you get hurt, or let's say you've been diagnosed with arthritis, with rheumatoid arthritis, so your primary care physician, known as a gatekeeper, will send you to a rheumatologist and an endocrinologist to be taken care of. And between them and maybe some physical therapy, all members of your team will coordinate your care including nutrition, to give you the best possible um, types of services and care to give you as much quality of life as we can. How about accessible services enhanced by technology? What about the patient portal? How many of you are on a patient portal? You can, instead of having to call and wait for 20 minutes on hold, you can go on the patient portal, send a request to your doctor or a, I'd like to have an appointment or do I need lab work for my next appointment? 
my vitamin D prescription is running out. Would you please renew it? These things can be done on the patient portal. You cannot do any emergency care on a patient portal. You need to call 911 or go to the emergency room for that. How about quality and safety based on research evidence? What's the best way to handle someone who is non-compliant in their care? If we have an obese person whose knees are in bad shape and needs knee replacement surgery, but they're not, are not being compliant in weight loss, nutrition, and, and weight management, and physical therapy. So quality and safety is based on research evidence, and we're finding out better ways to take care of each other. Medical specialties. Here they have 24 specialties and subspecialties recognized by the American Board of Medical Specialties. ABMS purpose is to support professional development and to certify physicians. What's a board certified physician? A board certified physician is um, someone who's gone to school, they've gone to their undergraduate, they've gone to three years of medical school, and then they go into their specialties. So it can be anywhere from nine to 12 years of schooling and licensing. Once you are out of medical school at the end of three years, you sit for your physician's license in your state. That's not the same as board certified. So for board certification, say you're an ortho, you go to orthopedic surgery after three to five years in that subspecialty as a resident and a learning practitioner, you sit for a test, you pass the test in three different stages, and it says now you're board certified orthopedic surgeon, and you have a license to practice from, we'll say the state of Connecticut or Massachusetts or Hawaii. Cardiology is a large field with heart disease, which is the number one for mortality which is death in the United States and across, actually I'm doing research right now, it's actually across the world. ECGs or EKGs are tracing of the electroconductivity or the electricity as it runs through your heart. And this is one thing that you will learn to do and do well because medical assistants do a lot of EKGs. We also educate patients um, in cardiology for diet and exercise for prevention and rehabilitation. Bariatrics is the medical and surgical treatment for obesity, and this does include stomach bands or lap bands and um, stomach stapling, among other types of treatment. And you don't just go to the doctors and say, I want this. For any kind of medical or surgical treatment for obesity, you go through a year or two of counseling and behave, excuse me, behavioral changes um, to show that you are sincere and that you want to make these changes. And a lot of times you have to lose weight, a significant amount of weight, before you have your treatment. Dermatology takes care of diseases of the skin, hair, and nails. Um, you can go have these chemical peels to make you look lovely, or um, we can do dermatology for types of skin cancer. You would see a dermatologist um, for that type of disease. We also have um, diseases such as psoriasis, and um, fungal infections. Osteopathy, or this is a whole person approach, and an osteopathic manipulative medicine, OMM, is a hands-on technique to improve function and restore health. Osteopathic medicine is all about making sure that the bones in your body are aligned the correct way so the mus muscles can be aligned the correct way so you can have better flow through your body. Emergency medicine. It speaks for itself. You work in an emergency department. Endocrinology treats excessive or deficient levels of hormone, which regulate glandular function. Diabetes is an endocrine disease. All right. Lupus erythematous is an endocrine disease. These are hormone um, and immune system problems. And lupus is in four or five different categories, by the way. Gastroenterology are, treats disorders of gastrointestinal tract, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, malnutrition, um, GERD, which is gastrointestinal reflux um, up through the esophagus. Gerontology or gerontology treats problems and diseases of older adults, and there are many of them. Gynecology treats diseases and conditions of female reproductive system. One type of gynecology that is treated is cancer, ovarian cancer, and uterine cancer. They also treat people with um, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, and they treat um, people or women with um, infertility disorders. 
Obstetric deals with delivery of infants. Internal medicine are diseases or conditions related to internal organs, liver disease, pancreatic cancer. Um, all right, internal medicine. And this additional training focuses on one of 13 subspecialties. There are 13 subspecialties in internal medicine. Nephrology is the study, diagnosis, and manage, uh, management of diseases of the kidney. And the kidney is where urine is created, where um, things that your body doesn't need, urine goes through incredible microfiltration systems to maintain fluid pressure through your vasculature in your body. Neurology deals with the nervous system, has to do with brain chemistry, psychiatry, um, is a neurological, um, they go together, neurology and psychiatry, because we're dealing with nervous system chemical imbalances. Nuclear medicine, it's related to radiology, and it's used to diagnose and treat diseases, and it's used to show organ function and structure on a nuclear level. We usually use glow-in-the-dark um, dyes to help us see what's going on. Here is obstetrics, which involves pregnancy labor, and delivery of the infant. Oncology work involves cancer patients, chemotherapy, and radiation. And of course, oncology takes, you have subspecialties for every organ that can have cancer in the body. Ophthalmology deals with eye-related problems, anywhere from being cross-eyed, far-sighted, nearsighted, to macular degeneration. Optometrists or opticians can check your eyes. Ophthalmologists can work on your eyes. Orthopedics works with a musculoskeletal system. Orthopedics means straight child. So we're working on the musculoskeletal system. Fractured leg, broken arm. Otorhinolaryngology treats ear, nose, and throat disorders such as tonsillitis or deviated septum of the nose. Pathology is the study of disease, and we investigate biopsies from cultures and tissue samples to determine malignancy. Do you have cancer? Do you not have cancer? We perform autopsies to determine the cause of death. You can have forensic pathologists, which look into all the causes of death, or you can have an anatomic pathologist who looks at the physical body. Pediatrics and adolescent medicine speaks for itself. It's a care for children, teens, and young adults up to the age of 18. Physical medicine specializes in rehabilitation, and they're certified by the American Board of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. So if you do go to, to rehab after you broke your leg, you are going to be overseen by a physical therapist, but you are also going to be overseen by a physical medicine um, practitioner. Podiatry treats disorders of the foot, ankle, and leg in some states. One of those things can be ingrown toenails or warts, plantar's warts. Plastic surgery reconstructs corrects or improves body structure anywhere from having augmentation of the breast or the face done to having reconstructive surgery because you were in a car accident and you had a lot of glass in your face so we have to fix your face or you've had um, a huge laceration on your arm and we need a plastic surgeon to go in and repair it so plastic surgery is not just what you see on tv on botched but it's also reconstructive and corrective for the deviated septum up in the nose, we will have a plastic surgeon come in and reconstruct the nasal area. Proctology deals with the anus, rectum, and intestines. Radiology works with the imaging for um, diagnosis and for the treatment of cancers. You can go in and have laser treatments done to shrink and destroy malignant um, tumors and masses in the head or the prostate because those are areas you really can't get to very easily. Recently, a friend of mine's um, mother had cancer uh, noticed in her breast, a rather large, um, well, not what you would think is large, but um, they noticed a lump in the left breast, so they decided to treat it with radiation therapy for eight weeks, and it went from about 10 centimeters down to one and a half before she had the surgery and had her breast removed. So we do use it for um, pre-surgical procedures as well. Sports medicine, treatment and preventive care of athletes, surgery. Use of hands and instruments to correct deformities and disease, and many, many subspecialties. Urology, 
treats disease of the kidney, bladder, or urinary system. So not nephrology takes care of the kidney, but urology takes care of the bladder and the urinary system as well. And it takes care of the male reproductive diseases and disorders. Working with other healthcare professionals. An acupuncturist treats pain by inserting thin, tiny needles under skin at meridians or channels to open up an energy field that has been blocked to help with the flow of chi or life energy through the body. A chiropractor does physical therapy, exercise programs, nutritional advice addressing pain areas. He also does testing, including x-rays, muscle testing, and posture analysis. And chiropractors work um, similar to um, the OMM in that they feel that the bony structure of the body needs to be in place so that the muscles can be in place so that all the body energy can flow. And as you, I'm sure you've heard about chiropractors who will help adjust your spine or your muscle bones to help with improving pain and the ability to use your body. Electroencephalographic technologists assist with testing to diagnose diseases and irregularities of brain activity. Um, this is when we put all kinds of leads on your head to watch the electrical conductivity going on in your brain. Massage therapists will use kneading, pressure, stroking, and human touch to address pain and promote healing and circulation. Medical technology. You have a medical technologist a medical laboratory technician, and a medical laboratory scientist, all different levels of degrees and learning. Nuclear medicine technologist prepares and administers radioactive drugs, operates radiation detective instruments, as we can see in this um, MRI scan or CT scan. This is a CT scan. Occupational therapist helps patients return to optimal function after disease or injury. Now, occupational therapy is um, a little different than physical therapy. Physical therapy is getting the body part that's been injured back to a functioning level, and occupational therapy helps you to fine tune that level. Say so you, you fractured your wrist, the so physical therapy will help you to get the movement and some strength back into your wrist, but occupational therapy will help you move the wrist, flexing and extending and rotating, so you can go back to work. A pharmacist dispenses medications or health supplies and chemicals. A physical therapist, again, helps patients restore function, relieve pain, and prevent disability after disease or injury, often used with injured athletes. Radiologic technology, where you assist a radiologist, you perform positioning and imaging as directed. A registered dietitian helps with nutrition and food choices and meal plannings and works in a variety of settings, anywhere from the hospital, the nursing home, visiting nurse associations, um, schools and daycares. Respiratory therapy treats patients with asthma, emphysema, pneumonia, bronchitis, or any other breathing disorders and works under supervision of a licensed practitioner. This is a subspecialty as a pulmonologist. Respiratory therapy technicians um, are supplement patient care for respiratory problems by giving treatments. Now, if anyone knows of anyone who's ever had asthma and been in the hospital, in the emergency room, the respiratory therapist will come and give you a breathing treatment to help um, get medication into your bronchial area of your um, lungs, your pulmonary system, to help you breathe better. A nursing aide or nursing assistant may be certified as a CNA or may have other titles. And a nursing aide or nursing assistant does basic patient care. A practical or vocational nurse duties include taking vital signs and passing meds, dressing wounds, and assisting nurses or registered nurses. Now, what is a registered nurse? Many different levels. We have a two-year program called an associate degree. We have a diploma graduate, which is a three-year program with coursework and clinical combined. And you have a baccalaureate or a bachelor's or BSN, which is a four-year program at college level. And the degree, the four-year degree, is needed to move forward to your master's or doctoral level. A nurse practitioner works with a physician or independently. It's a master's degree plus an apprenticeship and other specialties include those as a nurse midwife as well. A physician assistant practices under supervision of a physician and state law governs amount of responsibility allowed. I can tell you that in Massachusetts, physician assistants 
it's been quite some time now, but at one point they were not allowed to write prescriptions for narcotics and some lobbying was done and presentations were made and that law was changed so that the physician's assistant can now order narcotics for patients. Just an example. Speech or language pathologist treats communication disorders, speech problems such as stuttering, hearing impairment, diagnoses and counsels and works in various settings, including schools. And your speech and language pathologist will also help with people who have had strokes and had one, you know, if it's a moderate to major stroke, will help people learn to try to communicate again. Now, specialty career options are the next three slides. If you look over those, please, we'll move on to the healthcare professional associations. The American College of Physicians was founded in 1915 to provide education to internal medicine and subspecialties. The American Hospital Association is the largest national network of healthcare providers. We talked about networking um, in our last lecture. Can you imagine being part of the American Hospital Association? This is a national network. And now with computers and digital technology, you can network at home with people on the other side of the United States. The Joint Commission is an accreditation of healthcare organizations, and it's known as the TJC, and it is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization that comes in and inspects healthcare um, businesses, and you want them to come in, you ask them to come in, and you pay them to come in, because their report is very significant in the fact that um, it helps to gain reimbursement through Medicare in the effort um, to improve standards of care. So you do want the um, Joint Commission to come in and do their accreditation um, surveys every three years so that you can improve your place of business and so Medicare will go ahead and continue reimbursing you for your services. Among It's Medicare, managed care, and um, other gov and government and private organizations, insurance companies as well. The Council of Ethical and Judicial Affairs develops ethics policies for the AMA. And they update these code of ethics every year or as needed as new things come along. One of the interesting things since digital technology is digital technology has greatly improved the process of working with ethics policies, but the law hasn't caught up with the ethics policies so there's a little, little bit of lag time going on there. The American Medical Association was founded in 1847, and it promotes science and the art of medicine. And I'll tell you about the art of medicine. When I was a kid, we went to the medical arts building. That's where my doctor's office was. It wasn't in a clinic. or It was called the medical arts building because he practiced the art of medicine. And the AMA works to improve public health. Physicians from every medical specialty are part of the AMA. It is the world's largest publisher of scientific and medical information, and there are 10 monthly medical specialty journals. It accredits medical programs in the United States and Canada, and you need to be accredited by these programs before you can sign on and teach people to be doctors. That ends our lecture for today, and I will see you again at, for our next lecture.